Hello and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Uh, this one comes compliments of Yu Yong Zhang. Uh, huge apologies if I mispronounced your name. I, I'm really terrible with, uh, with, with Eastern languages, but uh, she went and made a really cool looking uh, spiral effect, a little bit like, I don't know, a flashback transition in like an old sitcom or something like that, in a wavy spirally effect on screen. So we're gonna take a look at it and uh, reproduce the effect here as a post-process material. So the first thing we need to do is just right click in our content uh, browser here, make a new material. Let's call it spirals underscore PP. And then we'll open it up and I'll just snap it here to the top of the screen. And then over in material domain on the left hand side, we'll change this from surface to post process. So this uh, grays out everything in our main material node except for emissive color because we're going to be using the actual graphic on screen as the um, as the provided texture using the scene texture nodes. So uh, this scene texture node uh, gives us uh, gives us access to a lot of the the like G buffers available in um, Unreal Engine, including a whole bunch of post process inputs. We're just going to set this to post process input zero, hook the color back up to emissive, and the result of this material is our scene as intended. So this is basically the well this this here would be like a window that we look through to view the scene and this node here gets us what's behind that window and, and puts it up in front of us for us to see it, if that makes more sense. So we're manipulating the UVs of the actual scene texture, which is uh, whatever is on screen, like in the bounds of the viewable window, uh, what we call screen space. So uh, with that all explained, let's get started. So we're going to need a texture coordinate node because uh, even in a post-process, um, even in a post-processing material, we can still use texture coordinates. In fact, if we start previewing this, we can see that that's just the UV coordinates of our entire screen space. You can see it's going to shift and uh, move based on the size of the window. So we can still use texture coordinates in a relatively conventional way. Uh, now to create our uh, spiral effects, we need to, well, first of all, we need to convert, like, convert our, uh, our data here from like vector data, uh, like the two vector data into a radial value. So uh, let's just subtract half from our texture coordinates. Um, where are we? So hold in two and click. This brings up a two vector. It's a bit like a, uh, so if you're holding one and click, we get a one vector or in other words, a constant. If we hold in three and click, we get a three vector, which uh, typically is a color because it has three channels. We can use it as a red, green, blue. And if we hold in four and click, we get a four vector. Much like the color, we get a red, green, blue, but we also get this extra alpha channel as well. So that's a basic rundown of how uh, like numbers and, and vectors work in materials. We're going to need a two vector because the texture coordinates are going to return to us an X and a Y. And we'll just set this to 0 0.5. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and we'll plug this in. We can even preview that and see what we get. So it's kind of just subtract. So the black here means zero. So any value that was uh, above 0 0.5, has had 0 0.5 taken away and any value below 0 0.5 is just zero. But we can use this though, because it's a mathematical expression more than it's a, a graphical expression. So we come out of this subtract into a function called vector to radial, vector to radial value. And we can preview this one too, just to see what we get. And this shows you kind of how the spiral is going to work, sort of. It, it sort of spiralizes our um, texture coordinates into this nice, um, nice shape here. So uh, we can just use the radial coordinates uh, as is, but that would just return us basically this, but spinning, but rotating once we plug it into a sine wave. What we want is for this to sort of be be doubled out. So there's an extra wave um, to, the, to the spiral. So we'll mask out the two channels that we need. So component mask. Remember, because this is a, a two vector that we're playing with, there is going to be no uh, B. There's going to be no blue channel. We're just using red and green. Um, so I don't know, we'll do green on top and red on bottom like that. And we'll just add these back together. So once we add them together and we preview this node. So it's uh, they've gone grayscale, obviously, because there's, no, um, there's no color here anymore, but you can see, hopefully this comes across on the, uh, on the recording. There's a kind of almost looks like one of those golden ratio spirals. Uh, if you can see it here in this sort of figure eight pattern, uh, it just sort of shows what it is that we're we're 
aiming for, what the kind of end result is going to look like thereabouts. The next thing we need to do is right click and get the time. We need to multiply the time by a value and this will dictate the speed of the effect. So hold in M and click for a multiply. Plug this in, then hold in S and click the graph for a scalar. Call this speed and we'll set it to something sensible, uh, 0 0.1. There we go. And this multiply, uh, we'll just add it to the result of our previous little tree here. I'll just make these a little neater. I do like readability of my graphs. All right, so far so good. Then we'll just plug this into a sine wave. And like we've done in the past with sine waves, we just apply a little extra calculation just to make them appear proper. So we'll multiply our sine wave by two, then uh, subtract, just subtract one. And then we will multiply again by another scalar. I'm just gonna duplicate this scalar and call this one effect. Um, not effect, it's not really the effect, it's the magnitude. We'll call it magnitude. And this will be a very, very low number, like 0 0.02, but we'll dial this in as we go. Uh, so let's just right click this multiplier, see what we've got so far. Yeah, I didn't think it'd show much, but that's all right, because we're sort of handling some esoteric data at this point. So now let's get our screen position. We are on the screen position. Screen position divided by our screen resolution will sort of normalize uh, the resulting uh, the, the resulting calculations and sort of present it back on screen in a way that makes sense. So we'll divide these from each other. So slash in the search for a divide. Uh, what do we want here? The visible resolution in B. And then we'll take this divide and add it back to the result of our existing tree. And I'll just Move some things around there like that. And then the result of this ad can just go straight into the scene texture. And we'll backtrack a bit while we figure out what's happening. Okay, uh, not sure why it's not showing the actual scene. Um, but this is how everything should be looking. Uh, I'm just gonna chalk this up to some sort of, I don't know, bug with the, <laughs> with the, uh, with the preview, with the material preview, not sure. Anyway, uh, we'll bring this down here, just make this a little bit neater. So uh, this is our material and uh, this is what we need. So let's just hit save on that. And then we can jump back into the editor, right click our material, create a material instance. And then from our world outliner, grab our post process volume. And if you don't have a post process volume in your scene, you can come over here, place actors and just search post process volume and um, just drag one into the scene basically. Uh, so with our volume selected, let's go materials, hit a plus, we'll choose an asset reference and drag our spirals instance onto this dropdown. As we can see in the viewport, this is the result that we get. So let's open up our instance here and we can play with our values here, which is only two of them, just our magnitude and our speed. So the magnitude is gonna be the amount of the effect. If we set this to one, yeah. <laughs> and the speed obviously is self-explanatory. We can set this higher to how high can we go? <laughs> I'll perhaps not do that. So 0 0.1 and uh, 0 0.02, uh, yeah, in, in my notes, these produced quite a nice effect, but you could make these um, these scalars, I mean, well, you can affect you can affect this material, say, from a blueprint, um, although with a post-process material, that could be trickier, but one solution around that is to create, go to materials and textures and make a material parameter collection. We'll call this spirals underscore MPC. We'll open that up. We need two scalars and we want to name them magnitude and speed. And uh, we'll set these defaults as well. So the default magnitude is 0.02 and the default speed 0 0.1. Let's just save that. So an MPC, a material parameter collection is just a list of either vectors or scalars uh, that we can add to a material and affect values from outside of that material or without having to directly access that material. And the way that we do that is if we go back to our spirals PP um, actual material, right click the graph and type collection, we get a collection parameter. Now, because I had the spirals MPC selected, it's defaulted the spirals MPC as the collection. So we'll just get our parameters. I'm gonna hit this little arrow here because we don't need to see the preview. So we have magnitude and speed. And now I'll just plug in 
these collection parameters where the corresponding scalars would go. And then we hit save, let that save. And now uh, we don't have those options in the instance anymore. So we can ignore the instance, open our MPC and affect, affect things from here with this little file. So this is pretty cool. This gives us some, uh, some extra control and we can access this in, uh, in blueprints too. Like if you wanted to do this with the level, like with a level transition, we'll just open up a level blueprint and find the node set scalar parameter value. It asks us to pick our um, MPC. So we select spirals MPC and then the parameter names will populate. And then we can set, you know, set our, our values this way in blueprints. So plenty of control there, plenty of different things that we can do, plenty of, um, yeah, plenty, plenty of, well, plenty of things to do, you know, lots of, lots of good stuff. So yeah, with magnitude of zero, nothing's going to show up. Magnitude of one, 0 0.01, we can get a real kind of very slow sort of surreal blending effect there. Anyway, uh, enough rambling from me. I hope you guys liked this uh, tutorial. Big thanks to Yu Yang Zhong for uh, developing the original material. Uh, and then I sort of modified it for, for post-process and to simplify it a little bit. So uh, yeah, that's awesome, awesome work. If any of you guys have something cool that you would like to see in a video or something that you would like to explore with me and we can make it together, I'm uh, always available. The best way to get in, in touch with me is on Discord. There'll be a link down in the description below along with a Gumroad store link and my PayPal link if you would like to make some sort of financial donation. It's non-compulsory, obviously, uh, entirely at your discretion. Um, yeah, that's all from me, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.